Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest with us, Paul Matisic. Mr. Matisic is chairman of Nano One Materials. Nano One can be traded as NNO on the TSX Venture. Thanks, Paul, for being here with us today. Uh, it's a pleasure. Paul, tell us about your background uh, in the resource sector and some of the companies you have helped build value in. What's it take to build those successful companies? Well, I've been involved, in, lucky enough, uh, in three successful uh, companies that have been sold. Uh, and uh, uh, so the most, uh, if I go through chronologically, I would say the first one was a company called Energy, Energy Metals, which I found in 2001. It was looking at the uranium space and and kind of characteristics of all my three successes is that I tried to enter into a commodity cycle where the commodity price was low, and at the time the price of uranium went it was ten dollars, and I put a plan around trying to get as many resources uh, of uranium, and I selected the United States as a place to do that. And in a matter, of course, of three years through organic uh, claim staking, uh, taking over three companies in three years. I managed to grow a company to over a billion dollar market cap. Uh, rang the bell as in the, in the NYSE, had a staff of over 250, and uh, eventually sold that company uh, with the price of uranium being at an all time high of $110 to a company called uh, Uranium One. And uh, I did a kind of a similar thing. Uh, actually, six months later, I started a company called Potash One. Uh, with a focus on looking at solution mine type of situations in potash. And I uh, staked some claims, I acquired some claims around uh, uh, Mosaic's mine, uh, Bell Plain mine. I drove three holes and, and lo and behold, found lots of potash. I attracted, uh, as a chairman, uh, Robert Friedland, a mining entrepreneur, uh, and uh, went on from there the next two years getting a pre-feasibility study done, and a feasibility and a permit. And then, uh, you know, because potash mines are very expensive to put in production, uh, uh, I had an internal option among some of the, the leading and larger names in the potash industry. And all during that time, the price of potash went from $300 to $1,100. I had uh, convinced uh, K plus S in an all-cash deal for $450 million to purchase all the uh, assets of uh, Potash One. Uh, that mine subsequently is called the Legacy Mine. Uh, K plus S has now spent over $3 billion putting it in production, and I understand that they will uh, have that uh, going to production next year. Uh, and then finally, uh, I guess 2008, nine, I uh, entered into the lithium space. I thought uh, that lithium was going to go for a ride because of uh, its commodity price, because of sort of the, the uh, EV revolution, the uh, cell phone, the grid storage. And I was an early adopter and a big believer of lithium. And uh, I managed to take some ground in, uh, in, the, uh, in Canada, the big pegmatite spasmy uh, deposit uh, in James Bay in, in Quebec. And then... I went down to, again, similar as my Mosaic Bell story, Potash One, I went to Argentina looking at brines and uh, I uh, uh, made some number of negotiations to, to get the ground right around uh, FMC's uh, Argentinian uh, lithium mine called the Phoenix Mine. And uh, I, uh, that's the Ombre de Murta area and I, I drilled it and renamed it Salda Vida. Uh, I managed to get a partner called LG International, big, big significant partner, big battery operator, uh, producer, and eventually did a pre-fees and I sold it uh, because I didn't see the same up, up, uptick in the lithium uh, price. It went to about $5,000 and time, type, kind of flattened out. I sold my project to uh, Galaxy of Australia for $110 million. And what I would say is that 
You know what it takes to build those successful companies where people and a commitment and a plan. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I saw the same thing when I were talking about uh, Nano One. Well, Paul, you know, in the past you got, you, you got the cycles right in these commodities. You're excited about lithium now, which is beginning to, the price is, is really rising dramatically. Where, what gets you excited about lithium now, and where do you see us in the cycle? Uh, I think, you know, let's see. What, I didn't have an Elon Musk at the time that was so popular, that had Gigafactory, that had the Model 3. We didn't have the uptake of all those companies. Uh, like Google wants to get into the EV space and Apple. So I think there's a huge rise in demand for lithium, and subsequently that's having a, a large impact on the lithium prices. Uh, but, you know, there's also the emergency, the emerging energy storage space. You know, as, as technologies get better around uh, solar panels, that's going to have an indirect impact, a positive impact on the amount of energy uh, storage spaces. And, and I think that will all be run by lithium. You know, I'm really excited to be involved in these two lithium-related projects. Uh, you know, as I say, uh, I'm on, involved as a chairman of Lithium X. It's a resource play in Argentina and Nevada. And also in Nano One, because I want to be part of the value chain, you know, uh, and, and where, where lithium is, is mixed uh, with other metals to make value-added cathode materials for lithium-ion batteries. So I want to be part of that change. And Nano One, you know, there's the, uh, the building of these cathode materials. They store energy uh, and deliver it very efficiently. And they are the core of what I think makes batteries work and by developing the production of these materials, we believe that through Nano One and our technology that we can differentiate and have a sustainable and a competitive advantage over other, other, other competitors. You had some recent developments uh, with Nano One, uh, with advancing the technology and, and, and cobalt uh, being able to have, produce a uh, working on producing a battery that's cobalt free. Talk to us about yeah. some of those those recent developments and the significance of, of of some of those advancements. Yeah, so we've got a tremendous staff uh, here in, in British Columbia at, at the old BC Research uh, uh, Laboratories, uh, and we you know it's very exciting for us. We're just working on a a new material that contains high voltage and cobalt free, uh, and addresses things for cost reduction, energy density, and longevity. And, uh, you know, we're always thinking of how to drive down uh, the, the, the weight, the volume, and the cost of batteries. These are the key disruptive kind of parameters that we're working on all the time. And uh, so we're making a whole range of different cathode materials, and some which are suited for phones, for power tools, some for EVs. And uh, the work that we're doing on these, on these new materials, they're, you know, to date, they're they're comparable and often better than the commercial materials that are available, and they're, they're cheaper to make, okay? This technology that we have, it's, it's uh, patented, it's scalable, and Nano One, you know, is, 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 we're in the process of now designing, constructing a pilot plant to demonstrate the, the scaled up production for these different types of multiple cathode materials. Paul, talk to us about some of the goals and the timelines of the company. I know you just mentioned that you're working on the pilot plant. Tell us some more goals and timelines. Well, we've got, you know, obviously we're, we're looking to uh, license a license for all these uh, products and partner with a strategic uh, stakeholder in the battery space. Okay, it could be with a Chinese cathode maker. It could be like an EV manufacturer like Tesla. Uh, or it can even be with a lithium company who, uh, who, who wants to upgrade their, uh, their lithium carbonate uh, resource, okay? Uh, we have a growing number of patents in our technology, uh, uh, and the pilot will provide some confidence that we can scale up. So I think that we're in discussions with a number of players right now, and, uh, you know, getting the, these discussions and the pilot plan coming all together will be very exciting for us. How will Nano One materials eventually 
earn revenues and, and how, how do you see that that coming down to play? Well, totally through licensing. Uh, we, you know, we're never going to be building these battery plants. Uh, these are billion dollar endeavors, but we can we can provide a license and uh, where we can get paid on a on a per battery or per ton basis and or get a royalty on what whatever they produce. Uh, so that's uh, probably the, the key driver in how uh, uh, Nano One will get revenues. Paul, it's a very exciting time in the lithium sector and especially with battery technology. Well, what really, as we conclude here, what really makes Nano One materials unique? Well, the, the battery industry is uh, it really an old industry that is, is entrenched with you know making uh, traditional using traditional methods and making typical batteries uh, and not really using any new materials that may provide them a better performance, uh, uh, longevity, uh, weight, le lesser weight, and so we're kind of we're kind of targeting the need for innovation in the battery space. And, and we think because of our, uh, our patented technology that we're, all, we're well positioned to deliver scalable and, and uh, sensible process innovations to the battery industry in this uh, rising lithium uh, ion price market. To get more uh, mm -hmm. go, go ahead, Paul. And also, you know, we have a, like, we have a number of individuals, we have a team with a strong track record in making this happen, through technical business and market matters. We have collaboration with, uh, with other commercialization experts at, at Norm Engineering. This is what they do. They take, they commercialize uh, pilot scale type of uh, uh, design work. Uh, and, you know, we've got good other partners right now. We have the Canadian government as a partner. For the last few years, we've received, we received Great support from them from the Industrial Research Assistance Program called IRAP to ramp up our technology. And just recently, we've just got another grant from the Sustainable Development Technology Canada, SDTC, to build a pilot plant. So, uh, so I think that makes us unique. We've got the people. We're getting support from uh, the government, from the, uh, from the federal government. And we're working with commercialization experts. Uh, and we've got a track record of putting all these things, these things together. Paul Matisic, Chairman of Nano One Materials, which can be traded as NNO on the TSX Venture. You can get more info by going to nanoone.ca. Thanks, Paul, for being here with us today and for giving us an introduction to the company. Oh, my pleasure. Have a great day.